it. But I do want to get your reaction uh, to this important and historic day. And what does it mean for investors when you think about the markets right now? You know, Andrew, a few years ago when we were together, I introduced you to the term tech clash. And as that's played out, um, it's uh, clearly become part of the markets. I think today we have to begin thinking about the post-COVID world more deeply. And while the days ahead of us are going to be difficult, in the market sense, we are looking over the hump into what the future might look like. And do the markets in your mind, both private and public, look look right? Uh, you were an early investor in Airbnb, huge success with that IPO just last week, uh, surprising so, so very many to the point where there are companies in the Valley, including a firm in Roblox, uh, that effectively have halted or postponed their IPO because they don't, they say they need to better understand what's going on in this market right now. There's a few realities of the post COVID world. And one of them is that we're going into a period of likely economic growth at the same time that we have zero interest rates. I think the market is still trying to sort out the concept of how do you value very high growth leading companies at a moment of zero interest rates and in an economic recovery. My experience is markets will figure that over time, but uh, at the moment, there's a bit of uh, repricing going on as those realities come into focus. And do you say to yourself, these multiples make sense to you? Do you say they don't make sense to you? When you're out there in the marketplace looking to either buy companies or sell companies right now, do you say to yourself, this, this all seems rational or I need to wait or, or I have a great opportunity now? Or how, what's the thought process? Andrew, you and I have lived in the markets for a long time. We've never lived in markets with high growth leading companies coming to the market in a short period of time with zero interest rates. What I've learned over the years is there are a better and worse times to buy into the market. But if you can invest into a major trend with big TAM and a market leader, you almost always do well. Anyone who invested in Apple and Amazon, even through the 2000 period, did well in the long term. As you think about major trends like the sharing economy and Airbnb or AI, as our other IPO last week, C3 AI, uh, participated in, or what we're going to talk about in a moment, which is the carbon revolution. If you can get into those companies, leaders at the right time, you tend to do OK. Do you, and I want to get into SPACs in just a moment, but... Do you think that the IPO process is, once again, there's a debate, is it broken? Um, I don't think it's broken. I think it's evolving. It's evolving to express that new world of zero interest rates, and it's evolving to this new tool, which has entered in and grown very substantially in the marketplace called the SPAC. And, and why don't we talk about what you're doing in the SPAC space, but speak, if you could, uh, more broadly, you know, to some degree, the SPAC, the SPAC is competing with IPOs, and SPACs ultimately could be competing with firms like yours. Uh, there's always been new tools and new competition. Uh, the question is how to use them well. And so uh, just on SPACs, we did our first SPAC five years ago when it was still considered sort of a backwater of the market. So we recognized that trend early. Just as early on, we saw REITs and MLPs move from a corner of the market to a key vehicle. We thought SPACs were going to travel the same distance. Over those five years, we've issued five SPACs very quietly, and we've tried to focus on how do you do SPACs the right way. And just like an IPO, Andrew, there's a right way and wrong way to do these things. There's a good execution, not good execution. And I think the market is just beginning to understand that. The volumes have been extraordinary. The year we issued our first SPAC, there were 20. This year so far, there's been 230 SPACs uh, uh, issued, and they represent almost half the IPO market. There's still 200 SPACs in the marketplace that have yet not found a company to de-SPAC with, and that's going to be an interesting process. But it's clear that uh, SPACs are here to stay uh, and uh, are playing an important role in the market. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.